Hi everyone, um, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to the 16th lecture of our CS2100 Discrete Structures course. Uh, so in this lecture we are going to cover combinatorics in more depth uh, and in particular uh, we are going to focus on uh, binary sequences, unordered lists or bags and we'll show how the two problems are connected. Along the way we'll also solve a number of practice problems uh, which are key to learn this material. So before we start, um, I would definitely encourage you to solve as many practice problems at home as you can. Uh, and also when we are solving problems um, during uh, this recitation session, um, I encourage you to try to solve them first on your own uh, and only then watch um, how I solve them. Um, I think that's uh, maybe the best way to learn this material. Uh, if you notice a discrepancy between your solution and my solution, uh, then please come to office hours where we can try to clarify uh, what went wrong with your solution uh, or maybe my solution. Um, okay, so let's get started. So what are binary sequences? Uh, Let's uh, look at an example that illustrates this. So we are looking to calculate how many sequences are there with five ones and three zeros. So what is the idea behind how we do this? Well, uh, the algorithm is pretty simple. First, we place all the ones, and then we place zeros in the remaining slots. Um, how many different ways are there to place all ones? Well, we have to choose five slots for this, these ones um, in the sequence of eight slots. Uh, so this is how to think about this. We have a sequence of eight ones and zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And first, we pick five slots where we are going to place ones. Let's say we do it second, third slot, and the last two slots. And then we place three zeros in the remaining slots. So, in how many ways can we choose? Uh, the five slots for one once. Well, we are choosing five locations out of a total of eight. So let's choose um, eight comma five. And then um, we place the three zeros in the remaining three locations. So let's choose three comma three. And now we have to multiply the two. We have to use our rule of products and the number we get is 56. So there are 56 different sequences with five ones and three zeros. One important thing to note is that, is that this is the same as choose eight comma three times choose five comma five. Why are they, they the same? Well, this is the solution where um, our algorithm first placed three zeros and then placed five ones. And clearly the order in which we are placing them does not matter. And so these two solutions, uh, expressions, um, co co um, result in the same number of such sequences. Um, so as it turns out, we can ge generalize this. So the theorem says that the number of binary sequences with r ones and n minus r zeros, um, so the, the, their numbers add up to n, n is the length of the sequence, is equal to choose r uh, of n, which is equal to choose n minus r of n. So we'll use this as a, a basic model for counting a few other things, uh, as we'll see on um, the following slides. Okay, so unordered lists um, 
are structurally introduced in the last lecture. Um, and we can use it, for example, to solve uh, these two types of problems. So the first one is how many ways can we fill a bag with 10 pieces of fruit at a shop that sells apples, bananas, and oranges? And the second one is how many non-negative solutions are there for the equation x plus y plus z is equal to 10. So these two are uh, equivalent. And why is that so? Well, um, it's easy to encode um, the solution to the first one into the solution to the next one. So if we have three apples, one banana and six oranges, this is equal equivalent to the equation 3 plus 1 plus 6 is equal to 10. Similarly, if we have 8 apples, no bananas and 2 oranges, that is equivalent to the equation 8 plus, 8 plus 0 plus 2 is equal to 10. Um, so if we count the solutions to these two problems, um, we'll get the same number. And we can count the solution to one uh, to obtain the solution to the other one. Similarly, as we did in the previous lecture. Okay, so um, we can actually encode this um, using uh, binary sequences. Uh, so let's look at the example uh, with equations. Um, so um, this problem or the number of solutions to this equation x plus y plus z is equal to 10 um, is equal to the number of binary sequences of length 10 that have exactly two ones and 10 zeros. Um, so let's see why these two are equivalent. And we'll illustrate, illustrate this on these three examples. Um, so we have the equation 2 plus 1 plus 7 is e equal to 10. And it's equivalent to the binary sequence below. Why? Well, these numbers that match x, y, and z are equal to the number of zeros that we have in between these ones. So we have two zeros, one zero, and then seven zeros. Um, similarly, if you look at the second one, one zero seven zeros two zeros and the last one which is more interesting because it has y is equal to zero we have five zeros and then here we have zero zeros and then we have five zeros um, so that's how we establish the equivalency between uh, these two problems um, one thing um, to keep in mind if we look at these two problems is that uh, the, the length um, is equal to 12. So the, the number of zeros has to match um, the, the sum of this x, y, and z. Um, and the number of ones is the number of variables minus one. So we have three variable minus one is equal to two. So that's that's how many ones we need. And then um, if we now recall what we learned in the previous slide, num the number of binary sequences with r ones and n minus r zero zeros is equal to c of n minus r. So in this case, um, we our n is equal to 12, and the number of ones is 2. Um, so we choose 2 out of 12, which is equal to choosing 10 out of 12. And when you calculate this, you get 66. And so that's the solution to all three of these problems. So. Uh, the two that we saw on the previous slide and this additional one that talks about binary sequences. They are all equivalent. And we'll leverage this when we're solving problems of this kind.
Okay, so let's generalize this. Let's say we have a bag containing R items that are chosen from N different types of items. Um, and another uh, problem we have is to calculate the number of binary sequences of length R plus N minus one containing exactly R zeros. So what is the answer um, for number two? Um, we already saw this uh, two slides ago. Uh, it's the number of barring sequences with um, uh, x1s and y minus x zeros is c y comma x, which is equal to c of y comma y minus x. And so there's the general formula. In this case, the number of binary sequences um, of length r plus n minus 1, so that is the length, um, containing exactly uh, r zeros, is c of r plus n minus 1 comma r. Um, now, why is uh, the answer to both of these counting problems the same? Well, because both have one-to-one -one correspondence with non-negative integer solutions to this equation. Um, so we already saw how uh, there is a one-to-one one -to -one correspondence between this equation and binary, these binary sequences. So problem number two. Um, and now um, remember, so bag or unordered list is a structure um, where uh, order does not matter and repetitions are allowed. So that also match this equation below. Um, so we are putting, you can imagine putting you know, these items in the bag. Um, and, and the order in the bag clearly doesn't matter. Just ma it, what matters is how many, um, how many, what is the amount of each item in the bag, which is represented with this axis from one to n. And it has to be equal to the, um, to how many items we can place in the bag. Okay. So let's state this as a theorem, what we just showed on examples. So the theorem says, um, if natural numbers n and r are given, then all of these three are equivalent. So the number of solutions to the equation x1 plus x2 plus xn is equal to r, um, where x's are no negative integers, uh, keep this in mind. They have to be no negative integers, meaning they include zero. Um, so they're all numbers that are, the solution has to store this axis, all the solutions have to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, so it's choose r out of r plus n minus one. Uh, so that is equivalent to the number of unordered list of length r taken from a set of size n with repetition allowed. And it's also equivalent to the number of bags of r pieces of fruit that can be bought at the store with n types. So all of these problems are equivalent. Okay, so let's uh, leverage this to solve uh, an example. Um, that involves tossing a six-sided die. Uh, so first, um, let's compute how many different outcomes are possible from four tosses of such die. Um, so this is a simple problem, and you should already know how to solve this. So um, why don't you pause the video now and try to solve this on your own, and then come ba back and see if your solution matches uh, matches mine. So the idea is to represent each outcome as an order list uh, 
x1 to x4 and x i is the result of the i toss and repetitions are allowed right because we can get four sixes and so on so the answer is uh, there is six to the power of four outcomes uh, so in each toss you can get any of the six outcomes and there is four tosses so that was the easy part um, and hopefully you got this right uh, because I would consider this to be a really easy problem and now um, let's move to the harder one so how many of those outcomes sum to 14 um, so here uh, we are going to represent each outcome as a solution to this equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to 14 and we are going to ask ourselves how many positive integer solutions are there since we cannot roll a zero um, remember a slide or two ago i purposely stressed out uh, that that the particular expression uh, we can use uh, to count the number of solutions to an equation like this only if we are looking for non-negative solutions in this case um, we want to count only positive solutions since uh, we can draw a zero um, so clearly there is a little bit of discrepancy here so how how, we, how do we go about resolving this discrepancy? Okay, so um, what you have to think about now um, is how do we count um, the number of solutions um, of this equation? Where these x's have to be positive, meaning how do we bridge the gap between this problem and the one for which we know how to calculate the number of solutions uh, which is the one where uh, the variables uh, are non negative and not just positive um, so if you think about this a little bit uh, we can notice that the number of solutions for this equation is equal to the number of solutions for this equation here uh, where this x is primed are non-negative numbers instead of just <coughs> instead of just positive numbers excuse me um, okay and we know how to calculate the number of solutions to this equation um, it's choose uh, of 10 plus 4 minus 1 comma 10 which is equal to 286 so great so this is a good start uh, but we have to be careful um, and this is where mistakes often happen when you are solving problems of this kind um, this number 286 includes all possible solutions to this equation so me it means it also includes solutions where um, one of these x's is greater than or equal to seven uh, which is impossible to roll uh, if we are using just six-sided dice. So now, um, from this number, we have to subtract um, the number of solutions where we have a situation where one of these xi's is greater than or equal to seven. So one thing to note here is that only one of these xi's can be greater than or equal to seven per outcome. Um, if two of them are greater than or equal to seven, uh, there is no way we could add up to 14. We would always overshoot 14. Um, so calculating this is the same as calculating how many bags of 14 pieces of fruit can be bought from a store that sells four kinds of fruit, let's say apples, bananas, oranges, and pears. If we get at least seven apples, and at least one of each other kind of fruit because they have to be greater than zero. So, um, so 
So how do we calculate a solution to this problem? Well, there is only one way to pick, let's say, seven apples, one banana, one orange, and one pear. Um, and now we have decided how to pick the remaining four pieces of fruit to fill the bag. Um, this sets to 10. The bag holds 14 items, so we need to pick the other four. And how do we calculate that? Um, so that's just, um, you can imagine that this is the same as uh, filling a bag um, whose size is four from by choosing from four different uh, kinds of fruit. And we know how to calculate that. That's choose of four plus four minus one comma four, which is equal to 35. Great. Um, and now um, let's put all this together. So just as a reminder what the original problem was. So how many different outcomes are possible? Sorry. So how many di different outcomes uh, when we uh, toss four, a six out of die four times, uh, sum to 14? And so we counted the solutions to this equation. And there is 286 such solutions. And then we notice that we overcounted. Since this also counts solutions where one of the x's is greater than or equal to 7. Um, and so then we calculated um, how many solutions there are where one of them is um, greater than or equal to 7. And the number we got is 35. Um, and so we have, um, this can happen with, with each of the x's. So we have 35 for x1, 35 for x2, 35 for x3, 35 for x4, we edge to 140. And then the total number is 286 minus 140, which is equal to 146. Um, so that's the final solution. Um, so this this was uh, this is something I would consider to be um, a hard counting problem because it evol it evolves so many concepts um, that we learned so far. Um, so you know we have rule of sums, uh, we have to calculate uh, the number of solutions for these equations, um, we have to uh, remember to um, to not overcount. Uh, and so we have to subtract these and so on. Um, so it's a great problem, but it's also a hard problem. Um, make sure to understand it. If you don't understand it, please come to office hours.